what I try to do. My training is as a developmental psychologist. So my obsession is always like, give me a break, you know. Nothing is more similar from a child than another child, and nothing is more different from a child than another child. But I have tried to uh, sort of sum up a few generational traits that can, I think, uh, provide a framework that may be useful uh, to, as a lens, almost, to think about some of these uh, uh, maybe differences in the way people think about programming, about the kinds of environments that please them or leave them cold and so forth. So the only thing I want to add here is that in the last year, I have been working at the media lab in the and uh, I was a faculty there at the time, and I was part of this whole uh, enterprise of actually providing children not just with programming skills, but also with devices that allow to crawl out of the screen with your programming. And in a way, uh, the very early Lego Robo workshops were first instance where the children could program something to, uh, for something else to happen in the world. So we did the workshop, I would like to say, because I work now at the Mauseum, I did them in Brazil, I did them here, I did them there, I did them everywhere. Um, and then, uh, years later, there was an attempt on part of some people at the Media Lab, and in particular, Mitchell Resnick, uh, to actually begin to think about how to bring the arts and the sciences together in order to give a different kind of quality to these kinds of projects. And he hired Diane Willow and they launched a project called Pi Playful Inventions and Explorations for Children. And um, so we went, it's the next generation. So you see. Some, you see the same Lego logo kinds of projects, the, the, the intelligent grid that takes different forms. Uh, there are different ways of thinking about making it easier for young children and so forth. But in a way, the projects are always the same. And then I had the chance to start working uh, with a group at the Exploratorium Science Museum. And uh, called the Learning Studio, which is led by Mike Petrick and Karen Wilkinson, who actually uh, know how to work in Lea. And the interesting thing with these two is that they took Pi, the concept of Pi, and they exported it to California, but with their own signature. These are both artists. They have worked a lot at the, at the um, Harvard uh, Graduate School of Education. They worked with they are not their words. They have a very good sense of the sort of construction of constructivist tradition. And they have set up a mechanism for themselves to actually pursue this type of uh, high project with an amazing, strong obsession to try to figure out what it takes for those projects to become less dull trivial than the ones that we have been witnessing, in spite of all their richness, uh, uh, all over the years in, the, in those workshops that we are doing. So it, together with them, and I, I, I was very, I was lucky enough to get the Nosher Fellowship, so I could continue the work. We started trying to understand the difference between what we started to call the, uh, the differences between West Coast and East Coast. And, um, so basically, um, I, you know, what happens is that you, 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 you can take, and it all has to do with, within this framework of these constructivist workshops that we did, to, to pay more attention to the, to the relationship between play, imagination, creativity, and learning. Because I think, you know, even in our ways, to, 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 to articulate what's going on, not just to do it, but to try to understand what's going on and what actually drives the world. Um, so, um, we started comparing projects that look very similar from the point of view of uh, something. So, I just give you a few examples. If you think of 
symbiotic chain reaction, uh, which is like you know one object triggers another, triggers another, or there are kind of chain reaction. They are cool. Everybody beats them. This is not even about programming. It's about building some mechanical, interesting sort of chain of events. If you look at your typical chain reaction, and if you look at the chain reaction that has been uh, proposed by artists, Fishley and Weich, I don't know if you have seen them. Uh, it's an amazing film that they actually show that the media lab at the time, which is nothing else but a chain reaction, but the magic comes from the fact that they have materials that you normally wouldn't even consider to be a chain reaction that were used. And the kind of interactions between those materials are funny, witty, unexpected, and it turns the whole thing into a, a concrete poetry text. So instead of just having your mechanical pushes and pulls, you know, you have you have you have it's all based on physics, but you have this impact, you have a fire that, that uh, you know, creates warm water, and you have a balloon on top that starts spinning down, and uh, at, at, some, at some point, you, have, you, you still have the wheels that move upwards and so on. But the whole thing, yeah. You guys seen this video? Yeah, yeah. Really yeah. If you haven't seen it, you should check that out. This the way things go. Another, another example is the work by, um, by um, uh, what's his name? Arthur Jensen, who is a, a who, who, who builds sculpture, yeah, this is hilarious. But it's all about these unexpected materials, you know, that interact with each other in a way. So Arthur Jensen is an example of somebody who builds these gorgeous, uh, very simple mechanical sculptures. And again, when you look at the work by, uh, of Arthur Jensen, the, 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 the interaction between the pieces and the materials are completely surprising. And it creates a sort of displacement or, or, or uh, that, 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 that just transcends. Look at this beauty. Those move. You see, it's a little me uh, mechanism. Thank you for doing this, clear. <laughs> but these are gorgeous examples because it's a mechanical trigger. But then the movement of the birds have, have a feeling that is not at all mechani me mechanical. Uh, there are also examples by Bruce Schaffico. Uh, there is at the Exploratorium Science Museum, there is just a pendulum. So if you think of a pendulum, nothing is like more boring in a way than pendulum mobile. So you can imagine you know, the, the pendulum of food and so on. But it's enough to have as a surface like a curvature and to put sand in it. And to have the movement of these things go very, very slowly. And what you get at the end is this tracer, this sort of automatic tracer that just traces, uh, that, that just draws this trace in the sand into a pattern that uh, you know, evolves forever. Uh, there are other pieces um, that can be taken sort of as cases. Uh, in the Swiss exhibit, there was an absolutely gorgeous uh, music machine that was built with uh, with household uh, with household devices like uh, vacuum cleaners and so on. It's, it, it's in a way it's nothing else than a chain reaction, but it was an absolutely brilliant uh, sort of. Mm -hmm. uh, way of, of uh, uh, creating this, uh, this <coughs> musical world. So these are just examples, but I have spent quite a lot of time trying to write also about 